Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, the Beechcraft King Air 360 is almost here. Virgin Galactic unveils Mach 3 aircraft design, and the FAA posts the Boeing 737 MAX NPRM for early public review. Happy Friday and welcome to the show. I'm Sophie Herlock. On Tuesday during a YouTube and Facebook live stream, Textron Aviation previewed the next generation of its King Air turboprop family, the Beechcraft King Air 360 and 360ER. The updated turboprop is currently in production with customer deliveries expected to begin in the fall and will offer the latest technological advancements in the cockpit, a redesigned cabin, and enhanced passenger comfort. A key feature of the King Air 360 cockpit is the addition of the innovative solution and support thrust sense auto throttle. The auto throttle supports pilots in their mission of delivering people or cargo safely by automatically managing engine power from the takeoff roll through the climb, cruise, descent, go around and landing phases of flight, reducing the pilot's workload. Another important update in the cockpit is the digital pressurization controller, which automatically schedules cabin pressurization during both climb and descent, also reducing the pilot's workload as well as increasing overall passenger comfort. The pressurization gauges have been integrated with the powerful Collins Aerospace Proline Fusion Flight Deck. With seating for up to nine passengers, the aircraft features a cabin altitude of 5,960 feet at a typical cruising altitude of 27,000 feet, more than 10% lower when compared to the King Air 350i. We'll be right back with Around the Patch. If it looks good, it usually flies good. The Bristel series of aircraft is proof of that. Furthering their legacy of safety and efficiency, Bristel is proud to feature the Rotax 915 IS Turbo in the current lineup of aircraft. The 915 IS Turbo power plant offers more power than ever before in a light sport aircraft. Learn more about Bristel at www.sportflyingusa.com. We spent days flying and burning fuel and experiencing the new Swift fuel. I'm pretty dang impressed. I mean, to come up with a high octane replacement fuel with no lead, that's a tall order. If they continue to go the way they're going, Swift fuel will have a replacement fuel of the market. It's better for the environment. It's cleaner on your engine. That's game changer. Welcome back. It's time for today's trip around the patch. Aspen Avionics has entered into an agreement in principle to become a member of the Aero Group of Companies. Under this agreement, Aspen will continue to operate as it currently does, supporting the general aviation market while also expanding its investments, resources, and new technologies in avionics solutions for manned and unmanned flight platforms for commercial, military, robotics, and multimodal aircraft. Aspen will also become a key provider of electronics engineering, product development, customer support and marketing disciplines for other Aero Group companies. During a search and rescue mission, guardsmen from the 203rd Refueling Squadron, Hawaii Air National Guard, and the 171st Air Refueling Wing located three mariners who had been missing since July 29th. The mariners planned to travel 21 nautical miles in a 23-foot white and blue skiff from Pulawa Atoll to Pulat Chuk when they got stranded on the tiny island of Pikalot Yap. The crew was about three hours into their search mission when they spotted an SOS next to the boat on the island's beach. They then called on the Australian Navy to assist in the rescue effort. And at midnight on August 3rd, the FSS Independence arrived on scene to rescue the Mariners. With the delivery of a C-130J from the U.S. Navy, the Blue Angels logistic transport aircraft transition from a legacy C-130T to a C-130J is now complete. The aircraft purchased from the United Kingdom Ministry of Defense in June of 2019 underwent a year-long refresh to turn it into a logistics and transport aircraft sporting the distinctive Blue Angels blue and gold. This is the sole C-130J in the Navy's fleet and will be thrilling airshow attendees for years to come. 
Jim Bork of Corvallis, Oregon has been elected president of the International Aerobatic Club, a division of the EAA dedicated to the safety and promotion of aerobatic flight. Bork succeeds Robert Armstrong, who served as IAC president since March of 2018. Bork is currently the second-ranked freestyle aerobatic pilot in the U.S. and the sixth-ranked in the world. He has also represented his country at the 2017 and 2019 World Aerobatic Championships as a member of the U.S. aerobatic team. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Virgin Galactic and the Spaceship Company have unveiled the first stage design scope for the build of its high-speed aircraft design and the signing of a non-binding MOU with Rolls-Royce to collaborate in designing and developing engine propulsion technology for high-speed commercial aircraft. This follows the successful completion of its Mission Concept Review Program milestone and authorization from the FAA Center for Emerging Concepts and Innovation to work with Virgin Galactic to outline a certification framework. Rolls-Royce has a history of delivering high Mach propulsion, previously powering the only civil certified commercial aircraft capable of supersonic flight, the Concorde. The basic parameters of the initial high-speed aircraft design include a targeted Mach 3 certified Delta Wing aircraft that would have the capacity for 9 to 19 people at an altitude above 60,000 feet. The aircraft would also be able to incorporate custom cabin layouts to address customer needs, including business or first-class seating arrangements. The aircraft design aims to help lead the way towards use of state-of-the-art sustainable aviation fuel. Virgin Galactic stated baselining sustainable technologies and techniques into the aircraft design early on is expected to also act as a catalyst to adoption in the rest of the aviation community. The FAA has sent an NPRM for a Boeing 737 MAX Airworthiness Directive to the Office of the Federal Register for publication. As soon as the NPRM is published in the Federal Register, a 45-day public comment period will begin. However, the FAA has posted the NPRM onto its website to enable early public viewing. The NPRM notes the FAA proposes to supersede Airworthiness Directive 2018-23-51, which applies to all Boeing Company Model 737-8 and 737-9 airplanes. Since AD 2018-23-51 was issued, the agency has determined the final corrective action is necessary to address the unsafe condition. This proposed AD would require installing new flight control computer software, revising the existing airplane flight manual to incorporate new and revised flight crew procedures, installing new MAX display system software, changing the horizontal stabilizer trim wire routing installation, completing an angle of attack sensor system test, and performing an operational readiness flight. The FAA will also be placing the preliminary summary of the FAA's review of the Boeing 737 MAX in the docket to assist with the review of the proposed AD. And that wraps up our week everyone. If you enjoyed today's episode be sure to like, subscribe, and to check us out on Facebook and on Twitter. To stay up to date on the latest aviation and aerospace news this weekend, head over to aero-news.net. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great weekend and I'll see you again on Monday. Thank you.